Steve McQueen's new film, Occupied City, is also at the festival. We saw it. It is four hours and 25 minutes, I believe. Um, it takes the form of an essay film. So I suppose Steve McQueen has two different modes currently uh, in his filmmaking practice. One of them is a fairly conventionally made prestige film, uh, usually about a political historical issue. Um, and then the other mode is a structural film for a gallery or seeming like it should be for a gallery art piece uh, about a political historical issue. Um, this takes on the latter form. It is based on Steve McQueen's wife, Bianca Steiger's book, uh, which is uh, passages of it, uh, I assume, are read out. Um, yeah, verbatim, I understand. Mic on. It's called an atlas. Atlas, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve McQueen lives in Amsterdam. I think his wife is Dutch. Uh, the book and the film is uh, various scenes of Amsterdam uh, during the, the long period of COVID lockdowns. Uh, Sir, and afterwards as well. And a bit Sorry, afterwards. Sir. But it turns when, yeah, it's sort of... Mm. So is he st- so you, you locked off his knighthood, yeah. Really? He's got it down. Sorry, respect. Amsterdam. Sorry, I, did. I thought I, I, assumed, I assumed he was. <laughs> his, Show some respect I to assumed his, a, his anti uh, colonial politics would extend to refusing, but never mind. Yeah. Um, um, yes, so he, he uh, he's made basically, it almost resembles like Patrick Healer's London in its form of mostly, but not entirely. But uh, it, takes st- no still satir- it takes no satirical approach to its no. subject matter. It's a very reverential, it's a very reverential solemn film. series of descriptions of locations in Amsterdam where uh, World War II and the Holocaust took place mm. uh, and anecdotes and descriptions of what places were used for and what happened in those places while you're looking at what those places are doing now or you know, two mm. or three years ago um, when the film was shot. Uh, it was directed and pro- co-produced by Steve McQueen, but the cinematography was handled by someone else, Lennart Hellig, I believe is the name, and various camera assistants. Uh, it was edited by someone else, co-edited by Steve McQueen. It was obviously written by his wife. Uh, so it's kind of a, a kind of a team project to an extent, but... Uh, it's an installation project because the, the, full his idea. Film, the, so the full film exists. It's 36 hours long, and I can well imagine that maybe in the Rijksmuseum in in Amsterdam or something, mm-hmm. it will screen probably in its full yeah. uh, full length and full duration somewhere in the gallery somewhere might end up going on tour, potentially. I can imagine that being the case. So it, there is, a, as it were, an installationary quality to it. So yeah, it's it, like you were saying, George, you know, it does borrow a lot more from the realm of video art, like it's artist video or... You know, right, but he also go, he can also go more hardcore than this. I mean, he, he, had, can, he, had, yeah. he had a piece uh, which uh, in Berlin last year called End Credits, which is a 12-hour uh, loop of all of the declassified files from Paul Robeson's uh, FBI Files, yes, yeah, yeah which are uh, sort of just made to be one continuous kind of cri- like like he's, the credits he's got at the an end of the film. He's got an archival approach to things. It's the observation. Uh, I think this. Takes I mean, this one wasn't particularly cinematically. The, the one I'm yeah. describing, but um, mm. yeah, I mean, we kind of carry. We as we're watching this, we we carry within ourselves the other. You, know, you can imagine the 36 hour cut, mm. really, because it's more of the same. The, 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 yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. I mean, I wrote down the formula as I was I was, mm. I was watching for the shots, which is. Uh, Find find the location uh, in which, from Bianca's book, um, some horrible instance of uh, deportation or dispossession would have happened during the occupation. Mm. Uh, now, detect within this location some sort of visual irony mm. or... Um, uh, or moment of sublimity or, or a or moment of levity or gaiety or mm. life something that shows the kind of uh, living nature yep. of the city a city which is not under and, occupation but a city sometimes which is, it's banality like these well, are sometimes fringe I mean, spaces it, and edge lines the portrayal and, of yeah. Amsterdam by and large is of a space of just like uh, a kind of consummate like um, adult playground really like mm. people are skiing indoors mm. <laughs> you know mm. like uh, a lot of these moments are moments from lockdown which um people will remember did have these strange moments of unusualness when mm. people were allowed to be together uh you know there would be like in soho people were allowed to like eat in the road fresco, so yeah. fresco. there were these and then yeah the <laughs> in dutch is eat ut to yeah so there are various mo- various moments of like post lockdown like release um there is a weird like there are moments where the authoritarian nature of gestapo and the nazi uh, party behavior is 
set against like enforcing or protest against lockdown mm. in, in well, Amsterdam. This is because the recipe, the structure of the one I'm describing is, you know, the visual ironies are there and then over the top, the voiceover will, will, will tell you the nature of what happened. Mm. Right. So this is like a machine that's sort of set in motion. Yeah. And once mm. it's up, once it's up and running, yeah. it has to run through all of these locations. And then it's sort of like incidentally in a way that for instance, incidentally a CCTV capture can capture something. It, it kind of produces these moments that are so tonally off. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it can't juxtapositions yeah the, I don't <laughs> think their intention juxtapositions always and I think there's moments that kind of happens just some, teenage, gener just some teenagers like mm. having a really nice time listening to some trap and then you're and hearing a a, joint and, and then you're then hearing about like someone dying in Auschwitz and I think his mm. argument is that like I think there's a slightly this kind of uh, progressive liberal argument which is that life goes on and all its diversity and colour and people are I, you know, well, I, it's I was kind of broigly relationship to it you know of, of these, mm. these vast scenes of canvases of yeah, it's, it's almost like there's too much stuff. You know, you've got people seeing and there's somebody uh, hula hooping. You know that video that was shot in Berlin where someone's like, oh my Berlin God, is amazing. Yeah, city yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's like a guy playing a trumpet. Outside the, Academy, the, frame of it. Outside the yeah. Academy de Kunst, yeah. And yeah, every, every nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Every, every kind of silly nonsense yeah, thing yeah. is happening. But I think, so with the film itself, it, uh, it was not what I expected. So I think because the obvious uh, visual corollary you reach for maybe is someone like James Benning, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Ur kind of a still very active landscape structural filmmaker. It's not that at all, no. It's not. I was expecting a static camera Me too, yeah. on these places and then within about, it starts off with a static shot of a corridor. It establishes and some seconds, rules and then breaks it. Yeah. yeah, a few seconds then we've got this pan and it follows this woman around. I'm like, maybe suddenly this is a lot less interesting. And what I found with the shot selection, some of it, it was very uneven. I think that reflects probably the duration of the project and maybe different camera assistants working on it and maybe availability mm. of where they were allowed to shoot. But some of the shots were... Deep, they were like a kind of BBC news report, um, you know, B-roll for a BBC news report of people on the street. Other times they would be, they would show real inventiveness. You know, there's a great scene of shooting up the mast of a um, wind turbine in the mist. You've yep. got real moments of real kind of strangeness and beauty. And then some of them will just feel I mean, there are some moments that are so spec. There are some mm. sequences in this that are like some of the most spectacular things I've seen from a British filmmaker yeah, or, or, I know or visual artist you're relating so to for instance well. I, I think we'd all agree that there's this sledding sequence which mm -hmm. is I, I think you're referring to with a Bruegel reference yeah. which is like, you know it's it's Tarkovsky and I mean it's, mm. it's, 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 God, it's watching gorgeous. these kids pulling themselves mm. up and, and there down, he actually down. has the sensitivity to do mm. what unfortunately um maybe the structure of the film doesn't allow or mm. the, the the conceit of the film won't allow mm -hmm. which is the to the voice recedes you know mm -hmm. and you know and here again we have the point about uh crediting your audience um with the intelligence to kind of reflect you yeah. know it's not like we're suddenly going to forget yeah. you know we've mm. been hearing about yeah. we understand what we're, but we can also kind of yeah. this can be allowed to rest and dwell and we can we can savor mm. this truly exquisite piece of mm. cinematography really with this kind of like a, joyful um golden hour and great depth of field i mean it's amazing but my problem is uh, that mckean mcqueen doesn't seem particularly bothered about the things that make this film good and and mm. i think and this is at the point at the point at which they i feel like he's i think he's hired yeah. good cinematographers or he, well, a good cinematographer and, and camera uh, assistants um who are being creative in various ways and then but they're He's not driving of, the pro. They're not in the driving seat. No, yeah. no but but and so that in that mm. sense, you have moments like that that are very profound, set against moments which are trying to be very profound and aren't. You know, and 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 then you have these moments that feel. I mean, the the one thing that did occur to me during it was actually, um, you know, those TikToks where you have someone explaining an idea, and then in one corner of the frame you have like someone like someone like yeah, 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 yeah. some yeah. video game, someone uh -huh. jumping over things like well, Mario Kart. Has just seen being yeah, yeah, cut seen, into little circles. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. There's actually a scene where someone is like um, uh, 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 making uh, using. Paint God, it's been a long day. Uh, no, paint, <laughs> painting the road with white paint, painting mm. a road sign in the road. Oh, it's like a satisfaction, uh, and yeah, ASMR a sort of satisfaction thing, yeah. ASMR vibe. While yeah. the voiceover, this very beautiful Melanie Hyam, she, she's just on Mandy. She's just yeah, a, yeah, a woman yeah. who speaks Dutch and English very well. Um, mm. This woman like reads out this uh, this horrific story about. Um, it was quite you know, quite. Some I, Anne Frank I, I, I think it was useful, interesting. You know, because sometimes with projects like this, you either get a sort of celebrity voiceover. You know, you get Tilda mm -hmm. Swinton mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. voiceovers. Or you get someone with a kind of authoritative English, you know, senior voice. But going for a young woman was quite No, I, did, I, I totally disagree. I actually made, I was thinking about this. Is that I didn't mind it. Post, post irritated post me. Post marker, but, right? Mm -hmm. So post Chris marker, uh, especially in the art world, you know, especially if you think about something like uh, forensic architecture's work or something yeah. like this, the, the uh, bland, affectless, 
female uh, English voice mm. is now the equivalent of the plummy uh, voice that you would oh, have the on normal. that you would have yeah. on a newsreel yeah, yeah. from the 1930s, being like, "Our oh, boys today, have we gone over the truth." Mm. It is mm. the it, it's made to represent the voice supposed to know the kind of voice of authority, the voice that we implicitly yeah. trust. But it was an intentionally so, youthful voice as well. It was more. Youthful I don't. I really thought there was. Context. It was completely shorn of any any distinctive traits whatsoever, and mm. I found that already uh, a little bit sus because. Mm. Um, the status of the voiceover in this in this film is a problem because I don't think it was sufficiently interrogated by him. What will happen over the duration of this film is that inevitably you will start to tune out of mm. what you're being told, mm -hmm. and yep. you will start to, and yet you will be within this as you are within many video essays. This kind of push and pull between the image and the and the sound, yeah. especially mm. when they're two discrete parallel tracks yeah. like this. But when they become so uh, so divergent mm. uh then of necessity you're going to tune out and at that moment there will be some sort of guilt reflex perhaps that's what's trying to be thematized but it becomes like Definitely. a it becomes mm. like a radio well, that's how it's received in re in positive reviews right mm. so it, it makes you, it makes us question like, our attentiveness and our you yeah know, our relationship but actually to the what it being seemed told. to me is a sort of like um you know uh history is a nightmare from what i'm trying to mm. wake up this kind of encyclopedic uh Understand, uh, approach to making work about the show where you feel that the mm. only way to approach uh, the enormity of the subject is to is to make something so, uh, likewise so gargantuan, so encyclopedic, so mm. indexical, so categorical that you can exhaust it. But of course you can't. I mean, that no, to me no, is, a, that, that is actually a pretty superficial way to approach mm. it. I mean, some, you know, Paul, Paul Salan and like 15 mm. lines of Todd's Fugue mm. probably manages to uh, make a more, uh, more, kind of deeply felt and responsive thing mm. than this like these gargantuan exhaustive things like Lansman's show or, or, I think, or I something think his, like this. His, I mean his project ultimately is is one of this he is exploring a kind of dissonance but maybe not in the most interesting way he could have done it wasn't mm. taken to his extreme um, and I feel like yeah there were points where this juxtaposition or not juxtaposition but there was a clash between image and what you're being told yeah. there were certain points where it was quite difficult to discern her voiceover because of the background sound in the mix mm -hmm. um there are other times where oh, it was I very sound. yeah i know a few times where there was so much clatter noise and kind of hubbub i generally thought she was actually too high in the mix but yeah she was at times like oh. it was very loud when the scene was I mean, quiet it, but when the scene was louder the, the level i wanted hard, so. her voice in the mix was sort of Slightly lower sort of zero yeah, yeah. Off. <laughs> off, <so>. i mean <laughs> a more powerful film would have been just static shots of these well, like, well, that but film was that, that, can come mm. back into a conversation here because he mm. made a film called american dreams mm. have you seen this one with the baseball cards is it and, i've not uh, seen american so, dreams you know it, it is again a parallel tracks essay film it's shorter and you know much smaller budget but it's a bunch of a uh, it's his pretty enormous sticker collection of uh, baseball cards from the 50s but meanwhile in parallel he's telling a story about um uh, the racial injustice suffered by baseball players since its mm. kind of inception mm. as a sport um but there it's directly thematized that this is sort of like a radio mm. droning on mm that you can kind of tune in and out of. Yeah, because of course, the, the parallel we can think about is, is Alan's work, yeah, which, is a, which is a discursive political film about um, sort of uh, racial segregation in America mm -hmm. um, and, and liberation in the sort of early part of the 20th century. Um, and this film is pursuing a similar project where we're being invited to look at a space now while being told about how it was lived and the lived reality of that space in the past. But the um, nature of Allensworth, and I did have like, and my qualm with Alan, I, li I liked Allensworth, my qualm mm. with it was it, w w with it was that it did, it like had this political dimension, like uh, it, like it rose above the surface of, of the they structural film form. They weren't always flush, were they? Yeah. yeah. And um, no, I liked the fact that things like drifted out, but like there was this, se this sense of telling you to juxtapose things, but like this mm. like commits that crime like uh, much more severely, this film. Um, by McQueen and, and I think that's I mean it's symptomatic of like McQueen's general tendency which I'll, I'll mm. talk about in a bit but like I think Allensworth has like the, the content of Allensworth Land tendencies yeah the, <laughs> the, 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 the content of the Alan Allensworth and we reviewed it on the pod you can mm. listen to it and it's showing at this at London Film Festival um, you it's know the, the nature of it is that you can just like your overriding experience is still of duration mm. it's still of like these places, like viewing these places and experiencing these places, and therefore having some kind of transcendent experience, for, like and it allows with sufficient what you're space for thoughts to exactly. occur. Exactly, mm. and so this the film never here, does. There is such clutter, mm. both auditory and visual, mm. um, that with with you know, it's you're sort of suffused, you're clamoured upon, mm. uh, and then it's interesting because the film also incorporates. Well, I was thinking about the step and stop on which of these. Um, mm -hmm. 
these uh, kind of brass um, plaques. plaques, which Richard was initi- it was initially the project of uh, just one guy, this kind of stakhanovite life work in which he um, tracked down using publicly available information houses where people mm. have... Uh, where deported from Jews pills, who, yeah, yeah. Uh, who lived there have been deported and, and uh, these plaques are put just like a centimeter above the ground so that you kind of trip over them. That's the idea, mm. right? Um, and there's a scene where we see what, some of these being installed. Uh, Nightmare for the local council. So. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. I feel like that, that already um, was a sort of a mission of its own failure. Mm. So if it hadn't had the voiceover, it would have basically been like a, a, f- a Piavili style. It would have mm. been an extraordinary a, yeah. symphonic uh, a city symphony, a city symphony to yeah. a yeah. city go- undergoing an experience of quite dramatic um, reawakening from like a, an artificial slumber yeah. during lockdown. Mm. But it would have it would have a been like too and long. It who knows? Been, maybe it was that film to begin with. You know, it might have been. Yeah. No, but it was based um, on this this his wife's book. It the, it must the locations. Have, I it must yeah. have started yeah. with. Um, but the I idea. think he was obviously dis- sufficiently distracted with this narrative of uh, lockdown because it begins to tell a story about COVID and the COVID response yeah. um, and the experience of living under COVID in a way that is oftentimes, I think, disarms the narrative that he's really telling, mm. which is this Holocaust narrative. So yeah. it kind of it seems at times like McQueen becomes a little bit more interested in telling the story about the kind of political ramifications and the, the lived. But it doesn't drift. It doesn't quite drift into like kind of anti-lockdown comparison mm. which it could it could easily do right no you know mm. it, it could provide ballast if somebody wants to do a yeah, supercar yeah, yeah. like that I but i mean every shot seems to tell us that like these people are oblivious to the dark past mm. in, in the location is it, condemning, that they're in. is it condemning the subject or is it celebrating their freedom well that's where it started to make me think of this mm. i know you saw sergey loznitz's um yeah. austerlitz right Austerlitz, so this yeah, is yeah. like the film that he made about auschwitz tourism uh and there there isn't this kind of uh didactic over determining um voiceover mm. but the the visual ironies are what what kind of sub- provides the sucker the, of the content. Was it Yolo Cost as well? The other art projects. Yolo Cost. Yolo like you only live so once. Oh yeah, yeah every, every, everybody at the Holocaust Memorial site in Berlin. So he superimpose um, images of people yeah. on the. Um, on, on the site against Holocaust. I mean, in a way, it's a cheap archive. gag, but what I felt that Los Nitzer was yeah. doing effectively was uh, by the end of this film, he was saying like, okay, but what is the proper way that somebody should conduct themselves mm. in a site of, uh, you know, mass murder? I think this like, film isn't should, asking that though. No, this film isn't asking this, mm. uh, but it is, I think, you know, it's... I think this film is saying the way you properly memorialize it is to write a book and to make a film about the Holocaust. And to list the names. It, it has this, it, it, it very much yeah, rarefies, yeah. like, or like, um, approves of the, the most solemn and exhaustive indexical, as you say, yeah, 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 yeah. modes of commemoration. And, and, this is, and, and this may be a good moment for my Steve McQueen rant. Um, because can, I mention can we, can we talk about before? the sequence we all yes. absolutely love oh, yeah, before, before we indemnify it like the one the one which is just like a visionary 10 minutes and if that had been the film we'd be like Whoa. so yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. section Incredibly where we, well edited. we are on a, a vehicle and there's a camera on a on a kind of gimbal rig that basically swoops and swerves in a way that's very familiar maybe on it's a like tram a, as well maybe because it's moving quite far it's yeah. moving quite fast no it's not on tram tracks it's on a road but um so this maybe. scene is it kind of invokes uh, precedents like Michael Snow's Region Centrale with this kind of <sighs> robotic yeah. oscillating robotic swooping arm the music that's played over top is Michael Levy it's, but no it's Baroque Main which is oh, made um, it sounded like Baroque it's a bar- Baroque, Baroque allegations um, uh, <laughs> it sounded kind of Michael it's Levy ma- no but it is, it's ma- it's Michael Levy and Oliver Coates Coates, together Coates, it's a track both. that they've released together yeah. uh, called Baroque bra- Brackets Main but I reason I bring it up is because Oliver Coates apart from all the incidental bits of trap playing off people's phone mm. uh, in the film um, it is uh, it, it's scored in a, in a much less interesting yeah, pretty way con- pretty conventional uh, mm. by Oliver Coates who did music for After Sun and who's also an independent uh, in yeah. the, in musician well, I, th- I felt that the music there was it was completely a key with this it had this kind of dissonant straining at the edge of notes yeah. and keys and it really let itself mm. wig out um, mm. and it kind of seemed to me to then be in discourse with you know Dutch filmmaking has this documentary wise and City Symphony wise that mm. Joris Evans made this beautiful film called mm. Reagan and it was yep. also it was an early like late 20s experimental Dutch film and it seemed to be uh, channeling the spirit of that well, it was, it was uh, and this huge... kind of haunted empty city also was perfectly mm. dramatized whereas uh, towards the end it started to really indulge like fairly conventional um, social documentary photography style mm. uh, portrayals of the 
the boarded up city, with mm. the graffiti. We, we've seen all of this. I mean, I mean, yeah. the city symphony is such an established part of film film tradition in a way, and it's kind of a lost art in some capacities. So you know, Berlin was the first great. Well, it's been city given symphony. over to kind of heritage. I did love the color and the fact that it was in four mm. three. Mm. Yeah, it was not that, as, it had as a strong as it had a strong start yeah. on that regard, and there yeah. was like this. Yeah, I assume it was shot on like fairly portable digital cameras. I'm not sure, mm. but it was just very like it was. It was like nice to see. I I, I had initially assumed that it was just shot by him like on a tripod going around I and, assumed that, and i was yeah. a bit disappointed to learn that there was this whole crew behind it so that mm. um it i suppose that the, the 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 vastness of the project known as the 36 yeah. hour version and there are mo there are moments against that. there are moments where he's filming in places where he'd obviously have to get permission i quite like the idea that he says to people like like his producer would say like oh what well, steve mcqueen who won an oscar like mm. isn't, do you want to be in this film can yeah. we can we film this you know it's kind of like a, a there's, kind a, of there's an interesting key. scene so there's a question about staging so obviously crowd scenes and there's some elements that have a kind of newsreel footage like when we see a kind of de uh, covid demonstration yeah kind of pop off and the police response reminded me of germany in autumn you know the mm. funeral of um, true yeah, Hans Martin Schleier. Hans Martin. yeah, uh, uh, Schleier. yeah. Um, not the, other, the, the, the funeral other of the terrorists <laughs> Oh, the, uh, the, the yeah. RAF, Mine off. Mine off. Um, Mine off gang. So we're just saying words now. Um, but there's a <laughs> there's a scene where we see the... Uh, there's actually... Okay, two things before you go on your proper rant. There's two things I want to mention I find very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is... Um, the scene where we see presumably the the uh, Netherlands um, prime minister announce lockdown in a way. That, you know, oh yes. You know. So that scene feels very opposite. It's shot in a kind of looks like a kebab joint or something. So is that... I, I presume did, did McQueen's producers know that an announcement was made at a particular time, chose a location, definitely assumed, or did definitely. was that was that restaged later? Oh God! Um, I wonder the, the the push and pull between the kind of staged and the yeah. kind of live and organic. I mean, it's funded. Well. It's obviously well funded. There's lots of mm. logos at the start. I mean, it it was obviously a it was obviously a grander project than it probably would have needed to be if you were an indie filmmaker. Mm. Like this feels like a film you could probably make without any permission, without any producers. Mm. You literally could if you just you have a just camera and a tripod, you could yeah. do it. And People that's often won't it, challenge it, you. Yeah, it's annoying when it's annoying when like someone with lots of money makes something that. Um, Imagine Some, a release form. That someone with no money could make, but doesn't do it in an interesting way. It doesn't like flex. But anyway, the other thing I want to talk about quickly is the... I, I, I broke into such a, a wide smile every time I saw the big lumbering fatso of the uh, Dutch king arrive. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. it such a large kind of uh, sort of inbred looking man. Lumpen aristocracy, aristocracy we aristocracy. deserve sort of. The, a, yeah, the other yeah. source of un unintended mirth destroyed. Was, was, the, destroyed. was this, <laughs> this refrain destroyed. Um, it was necessary. Which became increasingly was it demolished? Uh, frequent towards it was demolished. the end. Demolished. demolished. And yeah. I, I have a, I, my, my take on this is that um, can I just explain to listeners yes, what yes, it yes. is? Sorry, sorry. Yep. Um, so every so there's 130 locations announced, and obviously some of those locations since the 1940s no longer exist. And so when that is the case, most of them, I would um, say, in this case, yeah. uh, it happened a lot. Um, mm. The voiceover uh, announces at the end of the anecdote or the mm. section of voiceover, she says, "Destroyed or partially destroyed." Sometimes demolished, partially demolished. Um, sorry, yeah. demolished. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Demolished, partly demolished. Um, and it, it, again, it was another <laughs> way in which the film just didn't have. A, a sense of humor it, because it was it, it was dealing with such a solemn subject it didn't mm. think to understand itself as having no, this but like it's weird and it's, kind of, it's a lack again once again it's an underestimation of mm. the of the viewer's intelligence yeah. because it, and, and it's also a protestation against the like task that the film has set itself because mm. every time it's showing you this mm -hmm. thing we know we're not looking, we're looking at, at H&M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. we're, we're looking at a fucking shopping centre yeah, made yeah. in 2004. We know we're not looking yeah. at the you know, uh, reclamation centre. And it's kind of obvious where when we're saying, in a flat and the flat has features that make it you know, align. So what's it doing? So, well, it's because what, it's, what a film is trying design. to do is run, run the past through the present along mm. these kind of even mm. grooves. Um, and... There are, you know, there are times when it's able to smoothly do this. I mean, there mm. is one very affecting sequence, I think, when it all calms down a bit visually, mm -hmm. uh, and um, we concentrate on some shadows on the side of a wall, mm -hmm. and we're told about. You remember this part when we're told about how uh, somebody's neighbour informed on them right, ah, from the second floor, yeah. and this was a moment where I really felt okay. Now, now it's found it's it, it somehow managed to entangle the two parts of this film, mm. and, and then it loosely went off again. Yeah, and we have this a wedding of congruence between the. Was right. Right. Well, then we were immediately wedding. succeeded by the lesbian wedding, which was just mm. so tonally off. <laughs> yeah. And then you realize that actually the moments where the film succeeds are like a happy fluke. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, so lo- it's so long that there yeah. is like room enough for flukes. It's right, like it, exactly. it, it, it extends. Yeah, I think this is, yeah. So the, the actually what's more interesting are these moments of congruence rather than dissonance. It's quite easy to achieve I- 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 ironic dif- distance and kind of dissonance in this film mm-hmm. to yeah. capture moments of real congruence between the moment being told and the space as it's unfolding now. Mm. Those are more interesting to me, like you said with the shadows, I think. And there are a few instances of that, you know, when we see these, these mist wrapped. Um, banks of the river where, um, you know, with a lone man walking his dog through them when we're told about this is where people were bought and executed. There's a kind of like congruence between the experience I mean, it's fine there. He's to reaching an across. Image light. And what I yeah. wanted, what I wanted yeah. was a sense of actually a character, a bit like what Patrick Keeler achieved mm. so well in London, like a sense of a character emerging, which did mm. sometimes happen, but then it, it would just do something that, that completely I mean, I, I undermined it. The city is the character. Yeah, yeah, but like the, there's world. something about the, like the camp, when you're doing something like that, the camera has to take on this this personality which of it looking, did for the moment that which we're it did talking about sometimes yeah. but it autonomized it, it, it became but then yeah. it became but then uh, it did Brodsky's independent autonomous eye didn't it and it began to float through the, the city the camera yeah, eye yeah. yeah the camera eye and it's like yeah Brodsky and uh, Vertov and everyone you know, and so yeah the, Steve McQueen Sir Steve McQueen mm-hmm. so I, I, I my, con- my contention is I think that he is actually a deeply self-important filmmaker slash artist um, as I said earlier, you know, he, he, he divides his work between two quite different forms. One is like mm. small acts, uh, 12 years a slave, these very, uh, slickly made, uh, commercial dramas, uh, that deal with important political issues that have mm. an atmosphere of like rubbing your face in it and telling you this happened. It's really important. You know that this happened mm. and these art pieces or structural films or essay films, uh, like the Grenfell piece at Serpentine, which I saw recently, which was a 23-minute drone shot that kind of arrived at, at, at Kensington, circled the uh, building sort of eight months after it had been uh, after it's it had burned. Burn husk at so point, it was yeah. being like, but builders were kind of dealing with it. Uh, mm-hmm. Circles the drone, gets quite close to it, then moves out, and then you walk out of the gallery, and then you have to look at a na- list of the names of the people who died in Grenfell, um, which is yeah, a, a very competently made and engaging structural film which then rams down your throat at the end that like, mm. this is about something important and you should know this and this should be remembered. This film manages to be more obnoxious than that because it does the structural film elements. It has like moments of beauty, mm. but then it's constantly layered, as we've said, with the, the itemization, the indexing of the tragedy that it's ramming down your throat happened and you must know. Um, and I think, I think that he, as, we've, as a theme is emerging in our discussion, he underestimates the intelligence of the audience mm. massively the way that he tells. And I, I think it's, it, it's in, it's engenders a liberal sensibility. It, it is kind mm. of, you know, white fragility style, uh, uh, approach he has to in filmmaking, his choice which is you must be educated. He chooses to shoot. So, you know, in a park, there's a celebration of kind of African diaspora communities. He mm-hmm. chooses a lesbian wedding and yeah, fine. I'm sure Amsterdam is a relative diversity, but is it, is it kind of gives this narrative of this kind of cosmopolitan, Cornucopia, in Has a way. And I wonder plausible. if Amsterdam, Amsterdam having a very live tradition of far right um, political, dis- like political. I mean, Amsterdam movements. is definitely yeah. diverse. There's like huge Saturn yeah, Saturn army. It's true. He doesn't go to the north. Yeah, you know, but in the, the yeah. Netherlands as a whole is a, is, a, is, a, is a country that's really like tussled with the, the far right. You know, they've been very yeah, prominent yeah, through yeah, the 90s yeah. and the 2000s. And mm-hmm. I think there's and they have these weird racist traditions. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it, it's a film that doesn't want to admit the recrudescence of fascism in their own moment. No, I think it does want to gesture towards it. Right. There are. There's like a. There's like a shot. Uh, there's like a memorial to this journalist that was killed. There's like this this anti-fascist rally where this guy sings a guitar song that's called oh No God, More that's Fascism. So good. And he just sings No More Fascism. It's it definitely wants to signal politics all the time and make mm. you think. And mm. and as we say, that I mean, one must not confuse intention with reception. But Peter mm. Bradshaw's review of it says in the stand first, you know, this is a film that you know causes you to question things, you know, to make things. You know, I'm it, sure it does. It didn't it didn't <laughs> trigger for me any um, profound political realizations. Mm. You know, anyone with a vague familiarity with the 20th century European politics is fully aware the Holocaust happened. Mm. Uh, we all know like horrific details about how it was enacted. No, but I, I mean, I, look, I, I'm not, I'm not going to unveil against somebody making a city, uh, making a film about about like, thematically. It's not on an interesting topic an to, interesting talk, to talk about. To but talk it's about the solemnity, the solemnity, the, the mission, the mission engenders that solemnity. The, the mission, the mission approach that he has 
But my problem is actually not. It's just, it's totally, it was, it was confused. It that's why, that's yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, the yeah. solemnity causes this tonal confusion. Right, Because right, he's right. doing, he's, structure, he's got a structure in place that naturally gives rise to moments of joy and humor and weirdness. Mm. But then he like insists against it with this like completely humorless uh, verbal Which is a lack of bravery. Yeah. Exactly. It's, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of formal cinematic character. But people will yeah. applaud it. Because of the noble aims, it's it's a film that talks about what a profound film it underlines would be. itself basically. Mm. But it's it highlighting isn't a itself film. and it's underlining itself and it's 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 trying to ramify. Uh, it's yeah, it's trying to ramify basically the the things that are already being said formally, but in the language of the film, the grammar mm. of the film, we get it. Um, and I think you're right as well. You know, I think one of the other frustrations was. Um, his desire for coverage on certain shots so there'll be certain locations that we reach and we'll get it will cut to a slightly different shot or a different angle in that space and it's trying to give us mm -hmm. for no other it, 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 the interesting thing is when he holds a shot and he sustains mm -hmm. a shot like this scene with everybody snow um, uh, sort of gliding down the slope or the, the beautiful one of the tulips in the foreground and the teenage lovers in the back moving in the back oh, and they're just really nice. oh my god so so incredibly beautiful because he, he takes and the that lesson from the, 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 the scene a lot of these were just would have been beautiful moving image works and mm. what upsets me is the fact that there is seems to be no longer any room for someone to just make a beautiful experimental film mm. that like sh that fixates on a thing and shows it in a very arresting way and mm. that's all it does and, and Steve McQueen is just utterly symptomatic of the mm. way that moving image culture, the, uh, the place that moving it's image culture has arrived at now. The image and is entirely yeah. subtended. And if you yeah. look at the experimental strand, I mean, I used to, uh, in 2014, I, I watched every single screening in the experimental program of, the, of LFF and I saw some extraordinary works and I was really, I was really given an education into like what mm. moving image culture is because there was archive screenings as well. This time, I haven't even touched the experimental strand because every, every film in this strand you'll have seen from the program mm. is just a a, a a film about telling you about politics that may have been made in a slightly like it's a film story unusual way, which is something we've talked about you exactly. know, previously and I think as well there is that other theft, I know we're going to sort of institutional critique now but there is a an expanded cinema um, strand oh, to LFF, crazy. which is just... Which is not expanded cinema in the Malcolm LeGrasse sense. Ludicrous. Yeah, it's it's VR absurd. bullshit. It's, it's Guy, VR, guy yeah. Madden doing some, fun, some mm. nonsense with some free cameras. Awful. You know. I'm not that I'm trying anyway, to we, there, don't we, must, um, we must wrap up because well, you guys... We're getting cantankerous, we're getting curmudgeonly. It's, yeah. uh, we are, there, were, there were moments of real lucidity and beauty in it. And I think the, the film, I think you're right, You know, there were moments almost unintentionally, organically of, of, of coincidence that made it very beautiful. Or I think a product of the crew he was working with rather mm -hmm. than his own intentions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like the scene with the car like at night like i you know you wonder how how much that was directed or if that was more of a kind of like because it didn't it didn't fit with the rest of the film it was felt like more like an interlude and you kind of wonder if they're like it well, did come almost you know. around the halfway point as well yeah. yeah i thought that was the interlude that he said uh, you shouldn't leave the film during you know he said you should sit through the interlude that's oh what he really said. Yeah. McQueen say did we defy him by leaving yeah, we defied it by going Such to get a... fucking uh, annoying person. I'm sorry, sandwich. what were we meant to do? We were meant to just sit there and, and reflect. reflect. And reflect on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Steve McQueen's <laughs> aesthetic project is just, is, is just forcing you to hear like nasty stuff that's happened and mm. reflect and do the work. He is just, he is just like he's a fucking... He's the most do the work he's a, he's a fucking liberal. Mm. His work is not liberating. It's not interesting. It's just making you suffer. For the, in the name of like do you know what it is political understanding do the work thing yeah it is it's that do, do, do and, and, and occasionally as a byproduct of, as a byproduct of these structures that he has to create in order to mm. do this he sometimes makes sometimes as a result of working with interesting and talented people mm. like makes something that's actually visually beautiful I, I think shame was a decent film. okay I haven't seen shame and I, 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 I think, think Hunger you, you, like, was like okay shame. you'd like shame shame yeah. was a good film but, uh, from, from good. 12 years onwards I didn't see the fourth one he made the widow's one but like yeah, mm -hmm. in the main, like shame. in the main, when he's dealing with uh, oscillating between these two modes, I find him insufferable. So I, yeah, I don't have such an animus against it. I just think um, it was uh, a fairly uninspired approach to probably, um, <laughs> you know, like to a topic that is not devoid of. <laughs> It, it, it literally provokes, has to provoke new ways of thinking about cinema because, mm. yeah. right? I mean, you, you're, you're talking about documenting something for which the traces of 
by and large being forcibly mm. uh, removed, removed to have yeah. a process of mm. physical extermination of the mm. people or of the sites mm. and insufficient yeah. and you see the inadequacy of all of the existing, like, um, existing architectural forms Parent of Faraki reflected right, quite well in literally you know oh, yeah. uh, and, and that's how you see it that's how you see the same material um, given form given expression to by somebody who's like actually intelligently reflecting on the processes mm. that might have produced fascism yeah, I mean, whereas the liberal mindset cannot actually conceive of it because mm. by and large they were complicit. And you, know you might actually I mean? say like, a, a generous reading might be the this. No, I don't, this I don't mean Stephen a, Queen was. You know what I mean? But mm. I, I, like the, the sort of the mentality that uh, mm. produces yeah. Uh, yeah. something like this but film. This is, is not, what I'm saying. I think there's a, a generous reading. Is this this film is a machine that generates potentially more interesting readings? Like there's uh, there's unintended ghost images of this film. One of which mm. is like a kind of. Um, slightly satirical pointed critique of the kind of inadequacy and the, the, the kind of mundanity of modern um, urban development, like modern urbanism, because a lot of the spaces we see are just non placey insipid, crowded, hyper capitalist shopping markets. We mm -hmm. see, we kind of get a kind of critique of urban development in this film. Yeah, and you, you do know, feel the sort about of emptiness, more, the vacuity of lots mm, of these. While activities we hear about, you know, we hear about composers and string quartets and yeah, artists true, and true, painters true, true, in the yeah, past yeah. who have now been, you know, uh, were murdered during the course of the war. We hear, and instead, you know, we're watching, well, I mean, mm. yeah, we're watching kind of teenagers have avocado toast. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully yeah. we will <laughs> have a, times, more, yeah. a more interesting and engaging mm. and arresting experience with a different reflection on the Holocaust uh, mm. by Jonathan Glazer, by also by British director Jonathan Glazer's yeah. Zone of Interest is going to be screening uh, on Wednesday. We will watch that.